Good morning, Saga fans, and welcome to the UWS kickoff show powered by Rain Body Fuel. My name is Jonathan Ward, and today I'm excited to have London City Lioness and the Republic of Ireland uh, midfielder Haley Nolan on today's show to talk about her soccer journey. Haley is a member of uh, is a former member of CT Fusion, currently playing with London City Lionesses and the Republic of Ireland. She was born in Ireland, where she was also part of Kill Celtic, the Kill Celtic Youth Program and Piedmont United Senior Program and the Women's National League. Before coming to the U.S. to continue her education at the University of Hartford. At Hartford, she was named captain her junior year and switched from midfielder to defender. And once she finished college, uh, she took on a role to finish her MBA as a graduate assistant coach with the University of Hartford. Uh, and between her junior and senior year, played for the CT Fusion before jo joining her current club, the Lionesses of London City. And this past April, Haley actually earned her first cap as a member of the Republic of Ireland. Haley, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. How are you doing? Hey, Jonathan. I'm very well, thank you. I'm excited to be here. So first off, I have to ask, you grew up in uh, across the Atlantic on an island where soccer seems to be life for so many. How did you fall in love with the game that we all love? Um, I think from a very young age, you know, like you said, um, in Ireland, football is is a huge sport. It's followed by thousands, if not millions of people, you know, and it's the same in my household. We had it on every weekend. You know, I think I spent most weekends just watching football, you know, in and out hours after hours, you know, and I was also very fortunate that my dad was a coach of a local football team. So I kind of like tagged along with him to trainings and to games and kind of fell, fell in love like quite early on in my in my life. What was it like growing up in Ireland and playing in youth academies like Kill Celtic and Piedmont United? I know it was amazing. I had, you know, for me, I was extremely lucky. The, the youth teams I played with were extremely competitive and demanding and of me of a player, you know, and from Kill Celtic's point of view, that was a boys team and I played with them until I was about 13. And I think playing with a boys team at that age really, really kicked on my development as a player, you know, playing with people who are a little bit bigger than you, a little bit stronger than you, a little bit quicker. I really developed my game from a young age. And then from 13, I moved on to Piedmont United, who I think really pushed me as a player. You know, that was, it is one of the best women's programs in Ireland. And it still is to this day, you know, and from 13 to 18, they really pushed me on and they kind of have this Johan Cruyff kind of way of playing football. And I think I learned a lot in those five years. So you had actually, uh, while at P Mount United, you were on the senior squad and you decided to come to the U.S. and attend yeah. school. What was the idea behind that decision? You had planned to stay in Ireland for college, but you ended up in Hartford, Connecticut. Yeah. So, you know, growing up, I never really thought about coming to the States. You know, my focus was, you know, going through the through the education system in Ireland, going to college in Ireland and kind of seeing what kind of happens from there. But I think at about 16 or 15, I went to Dallas Cup in Texas and I competed in that tournament there. And, you know, there was a lot of college coaches at those games watching the games. And I was approached by a few coaches and I was a little bit confused. I didn't really know what they were talking about because I didn't know much about the, the U.S. system or the college lifestyle. You know, and after speaking to them, getting brochures, kind of looking it up online, I was like, wow, I'm definitely doing this. You know, being able to play football every day and going to, going to uh, classes in the afternoon, I was like, this is perfect for me. Like, I don't want to play football. You know, in Ireland, I was playing football three times a week with a game on the weekend when I wanted to do it every day for as long as I could. Um, and so that's why I kind of decided to go to the States. So I have to ask out of all the places in the States, you end up in Hartford, <laughs> Connecticut, which is yeah. very much like Ireland. It's always seems to be cold or overcast. Why <laughs> Hartford? Maybe that's probably why it, it kind of seemed like home, but I think, you know, I visited a lot of colleges when I went to the States. Um, but for me, I knew I was going to Hartford after I had five, 10 minute conversation with John Natal, the head coach there you know, for me, he is the epitome of football. And I think he sold me kind of quite quickly. I think his way that he wanted to play and what he wanted from his players, what he demanded from his players on and off the field, it seemed like it was going to be an extremely professional setup. And I think it fit the way that I wanted to play football, which is passing football, you know, the way that Barcelona play it. And that's the way that Hartford played it. And I think that that's why I decided to go there. So you you have a unique experience, right? You played on the senior team with P, uh, P Mount. Now mm -hmm. you're actually moving over to the States and you're junior year if i'm not mistaken you were named captain of the club and then changed positions what was that like for you to be named captain captain of the squad and changed back to the back line 
Um, no, that was a huge honour for me to be named captain. You know, um, my first two years at Hartford, you know, my freshman, sophomore year, I absolutely loved it. Adored playing there. I loved every minute of it. And, you know, I had great leadership and mentors there in Emma Donnelly, you know, Stephanie Santos, Caitlin Smallfield, all ex-captains of the team. You know, and to be named captain after those was a huge honour for me. But I learned a lot from them, you know, their, from their leadership styles. They, they're all a little bit different, but I think I picked up on a lot from them. And obviously moving positions for me, I think I still to this day flip-flop between midfield and centre defence. A lot of coaches like to play me as a holding midfielder. A lot of coaches like to play me as a centre back. And, you know, I'm okay with that. I'm a very um, versatile player and I don't really mind where I'm playing as long as I'm playing. You know, that's the main thing for me. Just get on the pitch. It's always yeah, say, right? Exactly. <laughs> so you were named to two American East all-conference teams to close out your collegiate years. What did those honours mean to you? Oh, they were massive. You know, I think when I was named those squads, I think that was only down to the teammates that I had around me. I think we had an extremely successful, my my junior and senior year, we had an extremely successful season. You know, I think we got to the America East final in both years. And I think we were unbeaten for a lot of those, a lot of those games. And, you know, you don't win games without the 10 players around you. You know, you don't win games with just one person. And I think that I got those awards, yes, from the way that I played and they were from what I did. But I think it was really down to the players around me that kind of pushed me on. So I kind of want to go back to this, this idea of playing midfield and then moving to the back yeah. line. Kind of explain that to me because as a, as a former winger and striker, I would not want to be back into the middle of the pitch or go to the center of uh, defense. But what was it like and how has it helped evolve you as a, as a player? I think it evolved me tremendously. You know, I think I went in there being a holding midfielder. Um, and that's kind of where you have to have that 360 vision, you know, to play in the midfield. And obviously moving back into the center half position, it's more just in front of you kind of a play. But I think the reason why I went back there was just because of my um, ability to play out from the back. And we wanted to play that kind of possession based football and you need those center halves to do that and I think that I kind of just was able to do that and also my sense of like just bringing a little bit less uh, chaos to the you know sometimes when games are a little bit chaotic you need someone just to put their foot on the ball and to kind of keep things calm to keep things moving I think that that's why I kind of transitioned into a center half just from my leadership stance you know I think that I really helped the players around me. So between your junior and senior year of college, you actually had the opportunity to participate in a summer with the UWS playing yeah. for the Connecticut Fusion. What was your experience like with the club and playing in the UWS and how did it help prepare you for what you're doing today? Um, for me, playing for Fusion was an amazing experience. Um, I think John Attell kind of got me in contact with JP Della Camara um, in regards to playing for Fusion. And, you know, he spoke to me a little bit about it and I was like, this will be great for me. I think I want to continue to play over the summer. I don't want to really take a break. I want to keep playing as much as I can. And when I went to Fusion, you know, I was surrounded by extremely talented players, whether they were still in college, they were just out of college, um, extremely technical, um, just athletic players. And I think that that really helped me as a player just to be surrounded by extremely professional people, you know, uh, who also wanted to kick on and to probably play pro as well, you know, and to be surrounded by that. And obviously playing in the, in the division, you're playing against extremely talented opposition as well from all across the East Coast. Um, you know, so I definitely learned a lot in that time. So instead of going pro after your senior year, you actually went back to Hartford to be a grad assistant on the, the with the soccer team in order to earn an MBA. Yeah. First off, what was behind the decision and how how are you uh, able to use that MBA today? You know, that was an extremely difficult decision for me. I think, you know, I was coming to the end of my college career and I definitely wanted to play professional football. Um, but I know how important education is as well. And I definitely wanted to continue on. I, I'm a business major and I wanted to continue on and get my master's in business just to help me out for when I do retire after football, you know. Um, and so I had a conversation with John and he was he told me I could be in a graduate coach. I can train with the team. You know, I can continue to develop myself as a player, but also get my education in the meantime. You know, and that's why I decided to do that, because I think I can always play professional, but I wanted to make sure that I had my education done. Just, you know, I don't want to do education and play football at the same time. I wanted to concentrate on football and not have to worry about education. Um, I wanted to have that completed. And I definitely think that moving on with my MBA, you know, that's definitely going to help me in the future when I want to get um, an employment maybe afterwards. And at the moment, you know, I'm kind of working a little bit with finance as well. And my MBA has definitely helped me a little bit with that. So th thinking about going back to be a coach, you're still active playing, right? How has the coaching side of things helped you with being a better player? 
Oh, a lot. I think I don't really know a lot that coaches did behind the scenes until I kind of became a graduate coach and saw how much work John and Kira Crinion were doing behind the scenes. You know, that analysis, that strategy that you have to do from off the field. You know, I learned a lot, you know, in that terms of when I went onto the field that I could see a bigger picture, um, things I didn't see before before being a coach. And I think that definitely helped, too. So last August, you actually signed and joined the London with the London City Lionesses of the English Championship. What has that experience been like for you to play at uh, at that level against teams like Liverpool and Leicester City? I think it's for me, it's a dream come true. Really, I think you know playing against Liverpool's, Chelsea's, Arsenal's. You know, I think that's something you dream about when you're a kid. You know, to play these big name clubs and hopefully one day maybe even play for them to put, but to play against them is, it was a great experience. You know, you get to measure yourself against the best. Um, and then, you know, what you need to go away and work on, you know, and I really have, have enjoyed my time here at London city. You know, it's been a great year. I've developed myself as a, as a player and a person, um, but it's been a great experience so far and I can't wait to continue to play these big name clubs. So you were also one of 31 footballers selected to take part in a series called ultimate goal. Was it something you found to be valuable for you to grow in the game and, and get um, exposure to clubs like London City? Yeah, I think so. You know, I did that too. I did that maybe two months before I signed with London City. Um, but for me, the experience was tremendous. You know, I got to be coached by some of the best players in the world um, in Rio Ferdinand, you know, Peter Crouch, and then also Farah Williams, who has over 100 caps for the English women's team. You know, and those experiences are invaluable. You know, I learned so much from Farrah Williams as she's a midfielder and what she brought to the game and what I can also bring to my game. You know, and I would never change that experience for the world because I think I did learn a lot. I think one of uh, somebody that I've come into contact with late recently uh, was also on the show with you in Rio, who is uh, she was a Crystal, she's a Crystal Palace U23 captain. I think she might have been on the same show because I have seen photos of her <laughs> with, uh, with uh, Rio Ferdinand. Yes, yes, she was on the show as well. We we're both mid, we we're both midfielders, so we had a lot of time to to kind of get to know each other and to play together. But yeah, Rio is a great player. I know she's a young player, so I'm excited to see where she kind of goes from from there. You've experienced soccer now in two different countries, uh, being in the UK and now in the United States. What are some of the similarities and the differences that you've experienced as a as a footballer? I think for me, the biggest difference might be um, the athleticism. I think when I went to the states at 18. I wasn't like I was an extremely athletic person just in general terms, but from the fact that you guys do the weightlifting and the kind of nutritional side of that, when I was growing up, that wasn't really emphasized as extremely important. It was more like that your technique um, was an extremely important part of your game. Whereas when I went to the States and at 18, I was thrown into the gym. And for me, I didn't really go to the gym that much. And so that was a big shock um, for my culture, but I think that I definitely needed that. Um, you know, and to be, to push on in my game, I definitely needed to get into the gym and to kind of, kind of push myself uh, away from the field as well. That was definitely a big difference for me. I think similarities, um, it has to be the professional setup. You know, I went to the States, professional setup, came to London city, an extremely professional setup. So I think that that would be the similarities. So you recently got to play Chelsea in the FA cup. Yes. What was that like to play, um, First off, in the FA Cup, right? But then against Chelsea, um, they didn't roll out a lot of their big name players, but you still got to play against talented individuals. Um, how'd that work out? Yeah, that was amazing. Um, I'm actually a Chelsea fan. So when I heard that we got Chelsea in the FA Cup, I was extremely delighted. I was really buzzing to kind of play against them. And we also played at Chelsea. So that was an amazing experience, you know, being a Chelsea fan to get to play against them, to get to play on their field you know, that again is another dream of mine that I've just kind of ticked off the list, you know, which was amazing. And obviously, you know, to play against those type of players, um, you're kind of in awe at times just because how easy it is for them. Um, but they were an extremely talented side. You know, Emma Hayes, their coach, is kind of demanding the most of those those players day in, day out. And you can see that even from the development players who are playing against us. You know, and that was a huge moment for me and a big learning curve, um, but a, a definitely a great moment in my career. Did you find yourself wanting to swap uh, kits with somebody? I did. I did want to swap kits with people. But, you know, with COVID nowadays, you can't even – it's it's hard to even get a high five. Um, but maybe one day in the future we'll get to play them again. Or maybe I'll even be playing, you know, playing for them. Who knows? Who do you think your game resembles? 
Um, for me, I personally would like to see myself more of a Xabi Alonso type player, but people that I've met, met and who have kind of seen me play say that I'm more of a Sergio Busquets type of type of holding mid, midfielder. So um, I'm going to say Xabi Alonso, but I know people think Busquets. <laughs> I'll have to go back and look at film. I thought more Roy Keane being that you were from Ireland. I figured you guys... I would take that one too. Roy Keane's a great player. So if anyone wants to say that I'm like Roy Keane, I'm going to take that. So you've been part of the Ireland uh, Senior Club since uh, October of 2019 when you guys are going through the Euros um, and trying to qualify. Mm -hmm. But on the 11th of this month, you actually made your senior debut as a substitute against uh, Belgium. What was it like to finally wear your country's kit on the pitch um it was amazing i don't think i can put into words how i felt in that moment to actually get on the field you know i'm 24 and i've been dreaming of playing for the senior irish team since i was like five or six you know i played through the development squads from under 15 all the way up to under 19s and i kind of had to wait four years to kind of be called up to the senior team and i thought will i ever get called up to the senior team and i finally did and i had to be patient had to kind of wait my turn, see, see when I can get on the field. And I finally did uh, two weeks ago. And, you know, that moment for me will definitely go down as one of the best moments in my life. Um, definitely a moment I will never forget because when you work so hard for something and to finally get it to, to achieve it, uh, I don't think that there's anything that can kind of beat that. So the London City, uh, you guys are in the middle of the table. You got one game left. Uh, you've played 19. You got 20 during the season. You get to play up against Liverpool on May 2nd. What are you most excited for as it relates to playing against Liverpool? Um, I think, again, it's against, it's against a great team, a great opposition, extremely talented players again. And I think that that's a real reason why I came to England was to play against these big teams, to play against these big players, you know, and now I get to go play Liverpool after just playing Chelsea. You know, I don't think a lot of people get to say that. And I'm extremely excited to play them. It's going to be a big game for us and for them, you know, and I think whoever wins that game um, will definitely be give us kind of the, the the talking moments going into next year's game when we play them. You know, they narrowly beat us 1-0 um, in the fall and we'll be looking to go there and to get a win. What have you learned and are taking away from this season? Obviously, there was bigger aspirations for you guys as a club yeah. uh, to gain promotion. But what have you learned and what are you guys taking away to get ready for that 21-22 season? I think for us, it's just knowing that every day you can get better you know we're not I'm, I'm 24 but I've got so much to learn you know I've had a lot of experiences but you know you can always be better you can always demand more of yourself and the people around you I think that's something that we're definitely learning here you know we've got a great young young squad great talented squad um, but lots of lots of youth and lots of learning to to do and I think that that's what's happened this year it's been a big learning curve for us and hopefully going into next year we'll be able to push on and to kind of, you know, win those games when it's one nothing down um, to not concede, to hold it off for the last five, 10 minutes to kind of get that one nil win. Or if you're one nil down to get that one nil, to get that one goal to kind of tie it up, you know, that's definitely something that we have to bring into our game to kind of have that resilience and that um, kind of demand more of ourselves to kind of get those results. What is a piece of advice that you'd give to a younger player? Um, I think for me, um, it would be to express yourself and to enjoy it because as an athlete, I've really, really kind of realized in my career so far, that there's lots of ups and downs, you know, and the downs can be extremely hard, you know, especially when you're working every day to get, to get a result or to get your dreams. And, you know, you're just, you're not getting there or you're kind of missing out. And there's a lot of pressure, whether it's get three points or to, you know, win trophies, you know, you have to remember why you wanted to play football in the first place. And that's just because you, you loved it and you enjoyed it. It wasn't to win trophies. It wasn't to like represent your country. For instance, when you're five, six, you're not really thinking about that. All you're thinking about is kicking a football around and enjoying it. And I think that that's definitely something that I would kind of push on to the younger generation is just to kind of have fun and to enjoy it. So our producer, Joe is notorious for hot seat questions <laughs> and he is actually thrown together some hot seat questions. So we're going to put you on the hot seat. Great. <laughs> I hope you're ready on the fly. Um, so here we go. If you could play soccer with any player in from from any point in history, who would it be and why? Um, I think for me it would be Paolo Maldini, center back for AC Milan. That's who I'd pick. I think for his time he was um, 
well above everyone around him just in the terms of the way he wanted to play, his aggression, his determination, his drive. I think that definitely would be him. How many hours of sleep do you need? Now, obviously, the physios are telling you you need a certain amount of hours to sleep, and you're telling yeah. yourself you need a certain hours. What's the perfect amount of time to sleep? Um, I think like eight hours, I think, is the most I usually get a night um, just with training and, you know, getting things done. I think it would be eight hours. Yeah. What is your favorite soccer memory? Um, I think for me, it would be the debut against Belgium right now would be the biggest moment for me. Are you a texter or are you a talker? I think I'm a talker. Definitely. <laughs> and then his last question on the hot seat. What do you want to be remembered for? I think my passion and my determination. Um, you know, I don't think that, you know, for me, you can always be the best player that you can be, but it's about how people remember you. And that's, that's what I want to be remembered for is how passionate and determined I am to be the best. And before I let you go tonight, I have to ask this question to all my guests because soccer is about community. It's about creating and bringing people together. What does community mean to you? I think for me, and I had this at uh, Hartford for the five years I was there, is just having that support and that encouragement, you know, every day. And I had that through my coaches, through my teammates, through the people I met in Hartford in Connecticut, you know. And I'm extremely grateful for all those people that I've met there. But I definitely think it's that support and that encouragement that you can get from the people around you. Haley, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. I know it's, uh, it's late there uh, out in London. <laughs> How can people uh, start or continue to follow your soccer journey? Um, I think, you know, stay in contact through Instagram, Twitter, you know, London City Lionesses always post things, you know, in regards to myself or, or the team. I definitely think that that's a way to kind of keep up to date with what I'm up to. Awesome. Again, Haley, thank you so much for taking the time to join us for the UWS kickoff show powered by Rain Body Fuel. Have a good rest of the day and cheers. Thank you. Cheers to everybody for taking the time to join us this afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you are in the world. We appreciate you taking the time to join us for this great conversation. And we look forward to seeing you Thursday, 7 or Thursday, sorry, at 9:30 Eastern as we are joined live by Louisiana FC for the UWS Weekly. Have a great weekend everybody and enjoy the time off. Talk to you soon.